places of dread, places of darkness, places of evil, all shall be revealed. On the brink of the second millennium of the Third Age, an evil presence took over Amon Lunk, the former capital of the Woodland Realm. Originally, the kingdom had encompassed all of southern Greenwood, with dwellings about the hill of Amon Lunk. Disturbed by reports of Sauron's rising power, however, King Orofer began migrating northward with his people, and Sauron claimed what they left behind. A shadow fell upon Greenwood the Great so that elf and beast alike fled northward, and the forest was named Mirkwood. Soon after, the southern part of the forest became a place of desolation and of dread. Shadow and disease crept into root, stem and branch. Trees dried up and rotted from the inside as the forest withered and died. Foul spawns of Ungolian found their abode in the darkness of Mirkwood. Dread spiders weaving grotesque webs, impenetrable by sunlight. An aura of darkness emanated from the new stronghold on the hill of Amon Lank, and it was named Dol Guldur, the hill of sorcery. The growing shadow of Mergwa drew the weary eyes of the wise, who feared that the master of Dol Guldur, a magician known as the Necromancer, might be one of the ring waves. A Nazgul returned to spread darkness for his master Sauron. Gandalf began to suspect that Sauron himself might have returned. So in the year 2063 of the Third Age, he set forth on a quest to Dol Guldur, seeking to uncover the secrets of the Haunted Hill. But the shadow, unwilling to reveal itself, left the forest and fled east. Thus began the watchful peace, which lasted 400 years, until, when chance came, the master of Dol Guldur returned again in might. The fell shadow of Dol Guldur threatened to devour all of the former Greenwood, and was only stayed by Lothlorien, the golden forest of the dream flower. Gandalf returned to Dol Guldur, only to find out that the necromancer was indeed Sauron and that he had taken the last of the Seven Rings from the Dwarves. The Dark Lord had made his return, gathering the remaining Rings of Power and desperately searching for the One. Some here will remember that many years ago I myself dared to pass the doors of the Necromancer in Dol Guldur, and secretly explored his ways, and found thus that our fears were true. He was none other than Sauron, our enemy of old, at length taking shape and power again. Some too will remember also that Saruman dissuades us from open deeds against him, and for long we watched him only. Yet at last, as his shadow grew, Sauron yielded, and the council put forth its strength and drove the evil out of Mirkwood. And that was the very year of the finding of the ring. A strange chance, if chance it was. But we were too late, as Elrond foresaw. Sauron also had watched us, and he had long prepared against our stroke, governing Mordor from afar through Minas Morgul, 
where his nine servants dwelt until all was ready. After the Council of the Wise attacked the fortress, Sauron was forced to retreat to Barad-dûr, but he was only stayed for a while. For not long after, Sauron sent three Nazgûl led by Kamul to reclaim Dol Guldur and rebuild their stronghold of darkness for the War of the Ring. Escaping from Moria, the Fellowship of the Ring entered Luthlorien, and the rumor of the appearance of the One Ring distracted Sauron. With the support from Moria, the forces of Dol Guldur led an assault upon the northern lands, devastating the outer woodlands. An orc army crossed the river Anduin through the north Undeep and assaulted Lothlorien. But the valor of the elves prevailed and the enemy was repelled. On the 15th of March, when the battle of the Pelennor field was raging in Gondor, Dol Guldur unleashed the second assault on Lothlorien and sending forth troops at the same time to conquer Thranduil's realm in Mirkwood. There, a long battle ensued under the trees of Mirkwood that left the formerly glorious realm a great ruin of fire. But in the end, the enemy was vanquished and the elves victorious on both fronts. But victory was dearly bought. For bitter were the losses for King Thranduil, and many elves fell in defense of their lands. Many songs were sung about the battle under trees, and many tears were shed. The third and last attack was made seven days later, on the 22nd of March. Thrice the enemy attacked, and thrice the onslaught was repelled, for the power that dwelt there was far too great for any to overcome, save if Sauron himself had come to battle. Then, Celeborn and Galadriel came forth from Lothlorien to lead the Galadrim across the Anduin in a fleet of many boats. And Galadriel threw down the wall of Dol Guldur and laid bare its pits. Thus, evil was forever banished from the forest. After the destruction of the One Ring, Mirkwood was renamed anew. Erun Lasgalen, the Wood of Green Leaves, and the Hill of the Necromancer in turn was named Amon Lank, as of old it was known before the coming of the Shadow. Then he gave way before us, but only feigned to flee, and soon after came to the Dark Tower and openly declared himself. Then for the last time the Council met, for now we had learned that he was seeking ever more eagerly for the One. We feared then that he had some news of it that we knew nothing of. But Saruman said nay, and repeated what he had said to us before, that the One would never again be found in Middle Earth. At the worst, said he, our enemy knows that we have it not, and that it still is lost. But what was lost may yet be found, he thinks. Fear not, his hope will cheat him. Have I not earnestly studied this matter? Into Anduin the Great it fell, and long ago while Sauron slept it was rolled down into the river to the sea. There let it lie until the end. 